Rub it on nice and clean. And bam, got the first one. All right, welcome back. So today we are going to paint maybe the most popular of the goat guns that I've done. Uh, and that's the Deadpool. Now I've got a couple of different versions of it. I haven't even decided which version I'm going to do, but the base is going to be the same. And I've got my really sexy glove on because uh, I've just taken these out of the blast cabinet. And you can see they're all nice and smooth and raw metal. So I don't want to touch them with my bare skin because I'll jack that all up. Um, but I thought I'd take just a second to point out a couple of paint options. So, of course, you can use spray paint. And if you're really good with spray paint, you can get inside all the intricate little nooks and crannies and all that. The biggest problem with can paint like that is that it comes out really thick. And so, like, unless you're really good with it, it's likely you're going to be a little thicker than you want to be. Um, you will fill in holes, things like that. And it's very hard to get a really clean finish. Um, especially when you want to get down in between all that. So we'll be using an airbrush and I've got three different kinds of paints here and I'm going to talk about the different ones that I use and why I use different ones. Um, now if you're a pro painter, this isn't for you and you're probably going to have lots of your own ways of doing it. So I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below, but this is just kind of where I am. Primarily, I use Duracoat. It's the easiest one for me to use. Uh, it's the one that is consistent and I can use it across whether I'm doing a controller um, or metal products uh, or real guns. Here I'm working on a controller. This is actually gonna be red on this side, um, but I don't require baking when I use Duracoat. Now, in most cases for metal products, I actually do bake it because it helps it cure quickly and I can move right on to the next step. Now with plastic, you have to be really, really careful on what you're baking and what tolerates what temperature. So that brings me to KG Gun Coat. KG is a fantastic product. This red, the beauty of this is that it comes right out without the need of using a hardener. So with Duracoat, every time I mix it, I have to use a hardener. That can sometimes be a challenge because I'm mixing a lot of tiny little colors. Whereas this, I pour it right out pour it right into the brush, I spray it, I pour anything right back in this bottle and I'm good to go. Huge, huge benefit. Downside is, is that I have to bake this at 325 degrees for uh, about an hour, roughly, um, for it to fully cure to go on to the next stage. However, they do have a low temp additive. And so if you're doing a controller or um, a lot of plastics, you can't go bake in a Glock frame at uh, 325 degrees because you'll just warp the crap out of it and on a on a game controller you'll just melt it so this is a really cool product because it is a single stage you don't have to mix it for typical work so if i wanted to bake this i could spray it right on here pour the extra back in this bottle have no waste it goes right into the oven so um then we on to something like wicked colors uh Createx colors um I don't use this very often. It's quite honestly, it's a whole lot cheaper. And I know that a lot of people that do game controllers and stuff will use Wicked Colors. It's a very different process. Um, there is a thinner that you can use with it, which in most cases I found you kind of have to add the thinner to get it to spray as smoothly as you like. If you're a Createx user, I'd love to hear from you and your thoughts. Um, I reached out to them. They specifically stated to use this particular clear to make sure you have a really hard shell if you're doing a controller or something to protect the paint because this paint on its own is just not durable enough um, to hold up. Whereas with either of these, I don't need a clear coat unless I'm using a specialty coating, um, which is typically like a, uh, you know, like a metallic color um, or if I want a gloss finish or if I want a specific satin or a really deep matte, uh, I can put an actual clear on it that will really enhance the look that I'm going for. But today, We'll be using the Duracoat and the two parts because that's what I use for this particular product, uh, this particular project. And um, we're going to get started. I'll do a little bit of spraying. I'm going to show a little bit about the uh, stencil lane, where I lay them, how I lay them, uh, and we'll go from there. So stick with me. Here we go. Yeah, we got our little, uh, we got our little gun going here. I don't have my fan on so you guys can actually hear me. Normally I would have a fan on to pull some of this paint out. So we're going to get a little test spray going. We're good to go. 
The biggest challenge here, and this is what I'm talking about spray painting, is you have all these little tiny cracks, and we're gonna be using this to get, the airbrush is gonna get in between all that. We'll use little short bursts, because what I wanna do is get paint in there, and inside of all that, so that when I go in and I do my top coat, I got paint on the inside, now, as long as you have a good coat, you're good. And then here, anywhere that I have raw metal, I literally just want enough of a coating to protect that raw metal, but a lot of it won't be seen. I'm kind of weird in the fact that even if it won't be seen, I still want to know that there's a little paint on it. It protects it, keeps it smoother. In this case, I'm just going to get a nice, clean, smooth coat. And you want your initial coat to be white. You don't want to go too thick. You just want enough on there to get a good tack coat and then you can let it dry. And I highly encourage you to work your edges, especially on that last coat. Work all your edges and your small spots before you do your main body here so that you end up with a smoother finish. In this case, I'm literally just getting this tacky coat on there so that my next coat will go on even smoother. So you can see, you can still see through it just ever so slightly, which is really what you want. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other parts and then we'll come back and we'll do another coat. So we gave this uh, just a few minutes to get a nice dry, so I can actually touch it now if I wanted to. So what we're gonna do is we go a quick pass over these intersections here, the intersections. I wanna make sure I get down in all the cracks and crevices, anywhere that you might actually see at this point. Metal's all protected, so that's good. Obviously, you're not gonna get a lot of um, handling inside of the trigger guard, but you still wanna make sure it's smooth. So now at this point, I'm gonna run down this skinny, extra, skinny section. So I get a good solid coat of paint, make sure my back sections and everything else has got a good coat on it. And I can put my nice, solid, heavier coat across the main body. and make sure I've got a good finish without a bunch of overspray. Okay, we're gonna do some stencil work now. And uh, we've got the grips, the mag, the slide. We're not gonna put any stencils on the lower. And of course, we're gonna do the suppressor. <clears throat> so changed up my stencils just a little bit from my previous um, Deadpool. So if you've, if you've looked at any of those, you'll notice that uh, change the font a little bit. We're going to be going with a slightly different mask this time. Nothing crazy, just enough to keep it fresh. Um, I got a, a lot of requests for this one. And, you know, even for me, after a while, you kind of get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. So keeping it fresh is, is a good way to go. Um, so I use a, a transfer tape, obviously. It's the way to go. Um, there's a couple of basic things that I like to do. Now, I don't know if you're going to be working on a Goat Gun 1911 specifically, but if you are, some tips that I use, and but these tips are transferable to a lot of things. So because I'm doing the same stencil on both sides, I'm laying a little of this green pinstriping tape down. This is simply to make sure that the wording is the same location on both sides. Uh, it's real easy to, to be off one side or the other. So you put your transfer tape down and uh, just make sure that your stuff sticks to it. And these little stencils can be a real pain in the butt, but we'll get them all on there. I'll give myself a, a hair more tape on the next one. And there 
we go. So giving yourself a little bit more tape makes it a little easier to hold on to, so uh, might encourage that. We're gonna line this guy up, try to get it square. And there we go, we're down. Rub it on nice and clean. And bam, got the first one. So I'm gonna take my own advice and go with something a little longer because that one was quite challenging to hold on to. Um, something else that uh, we talk about a lot in the stencils is the difference between, a, I guess, a positive stencil and a negative stencil. Um, so a couple of things like when you lay your background color down, then you lay an outline stencil and you spray into it. And then when you take it out, you have the fill. And in this case, I left the letters in place, um, had a full outline of this. And when I sprayed it, it filled this all with black and I peeled the letters out, which gave me that, that transition. Same thing with the name on here. Um, and that works really well when you just need to add one placement stencil. When you're doing a lot of stencils, um, sometimes it makes more sense to actually lay down the stencil, your base color, then you lay down the stencil and you spray all the way across it. So when you remove it, the base color is still what's being seen versus spraying a new color on top. So it just depends on how you're doing it. On this case, I'm literally just gonna be adding these little words. Um, so I'm, everything else is red and I don't need multiple colors. You know, I don't, I don't want a bunch of layers uh, of paint on this thing. I just want my stencil to go down. So that's what we'll be doing. So we'll lay this down and uh, there we go. So the second side, first side. So you can see that green basically just helps me make sure that I don't have anything going super far forward or anything going super far back so that it has a little bit more symmetry. So we're gonna do the rest. Um, one of the other quick little tips I'll share is on the cylindrical thing like this, when I lay my stencil down, the tip that I use to help make sure that they are symmetrical, much like the bang, is put a little piece of tape and it goes right across the middle like that. Uh, and the reason I do this is that so when I lay my stencil down, I can tell where it is on the other side. Let me get this little tape out of the way here. So, so I lay my first stencil down and I'll line it up with the green and when I flip it over, I'll lay my second down, I'll line it up with the green. So it's pretty good to go. The masks are a multi-piece. So the masks have, they're gonna be on here. They're gonna have an outer ring of red. Then I'll go back in and I'll tape that out and then there'll be, I'll peel the eyes out. So here you can see, I'll pop one of these out for you. So I'll have the tiny little eye. Then I'll go back in and I'll spray that eye um, in white and I'll have to tape everything else off so that I only have the white left. So that's a multi-layer. These are excruciating to do because they don't like to stick to this tiny little perforated surface. Um, it's just painstaking to get them to stay there and not to have just paint bleed all under so you just have to really take your time on something like that um so i'll just speed this up we'll do the rest of the stencils and come right back i figured i'd kind of show what i'm doing here so this is, uh, this is tough. You gotta make sure that it's centered, of course, and you want them both to look the same. Both mags to look the same. Uh, it is a bit challenging to get it to line up. Um, sometimes I even have to tape it down. Depends on what I'm putting on here, but I want the tip of this and the tip of that to line up. Now. Normally you rub a stencil on, that bad boy is down, but because there's no smooth surface for it to stick to, you see it immediately peels up. So what I do is I very tightly roll and put pressure on the stencil at the same time. And then I use the other hand and I literally just come back and I'm constantly pushing it back down so that I can get it off. 
and that'll leave my stencil down. And I try to put enough pressure, I can see if you can see the slight indentations, enough pressure to really make sure that stencil is down. And right before I hit it with the airbrush, I'm gonna go back and put pressure on it again, just to make sure it's down. Now, the, uh, the annoying part of going back and taping off all the stencil edges and making sure I don't have overspray on anything else. So I'm not gonna, not gonna make you watch all of that, but we'll do that. We'll go ahead and spray everything here. Uh, gets white, 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 that'll get red. And then um, when it's all said and done, we'll come back together and assemble this bad boy. Okay, so these are all white. They actually just came out of the oven. I like to bake them so that they are nice and hard. The um, trick to these little guys is gonna be around getting everything taped off. So I already sprayed the red on here, um, baked it for just a few minutes, just long enough to make sure that base coat is dry. Now, obviously I'm using a paint that, that really works on, on a regular paint. You just gotta figure out what works best for you. <clears throat> so um, the trick here is getting all the other stuff taped off because we're about to pop the eyes out and the um because the red's already done we just want to tape off everywhere that there's red leave just enough for the white pop those out get a little spray of white and keep in mind you have to be real careful here because we still have to make sure that we um we're real careful to make sure that it's fully pressed down in there because uh it's again still really difficult with the texture of the grip and it's important that we make sure that we push that down just before we spray one more time so that we don't get any unnecessary under spray if you will now that being said it's pretty likely there's going to be a little bit because it's just not a flat surface um and so i'm going to use a different size so that's okay, you know, it's, it's, it's bound to happen. You just wanna minimize it the best you can. I'm kind of a stickler to having that under spray and it drives me nuts when I see um, professional applicators that allow a lot of under spray and just seems like it's normal and okay. And when I know that it can be avoided if you just have some patience. But in this case, because it is so little Getting a little bit of underspray is almost 100% unavoidable because you just can't help the fact that you're working on the tiniest textured surface. So don't stress about it too much. Got to make sure I got enough room for my eye to pop out there. Okay. Uh, almost ready to pop those eyes out. Just got to make sure I cover all the black. Now... I didn't fully cure this one because the stencil doesn't stick down really well. And if you put this in the oven at a normal um, 180 degrees, like these guys, I put them in 180 degrees and you can see that stencil actually held up pretty well. And I put it in there um, for 15 minutes and that's just enough to cure that so that I can pull all the stencils off and um, I'm gonna actually be distressing them. So I'll show you how to do that. These again, because of the textured surface, if I put them in there for that, the stencil will just curl up so much and it'll basically render it useless, which has happened. Uh, and and um, ultimately what I ended up doing is peeling the stencil off and then very carefully laying new, one, new eyes down right on top of it. And it worked fine. It's just a whole lot of extra work. So in this case, we're just popping these eyes out and they're gonna get a little shot of white paint. Now you can see there, they're ready to go. Uh, again, <clears throat> making sure that we get good pressure down on there and they'll be ready to rock and roll. So we'll hit that with a little white. We'll, uh, we'll let that dry. We're gonna come back. Everything will be ready to go. I just wanna take a second to show you how to do that. Everything's been painted and the stencils have been removed and you can see our little faces 
is ready. To, they're ready to go too. So uh, this is all going to get uh, dirtied up. We'll put some black on that. We're going to rub it all off. We'll do that here in a minute. But I got to go in and first paint all the uh, accessories titanium. So a couple things. I use these skewers. They're perfect for a lot of the small items. But anything that doesn't have a hole in it, uh, I use this little clip set, which is super helpful. And I usually have this link in uh, my list of things that I use below. So if you're interested and you want to pick one up, of course, anything you buy from my Amazon affiliate links are always helpful, but that's totally up to you. There's lots of options out there, lots of brands, and you may find something that you like better. I just like to throw some stuff out that might be helpful if you're just getting started. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to set this stuff up. We're going to spray it all titanium. Then uh, we'll bake it also as uh, as per usual. And again, that just speeds the process up for me. And then we're going to come back and we're going to throw some black on here and dirty all this up. And we'll wrap this project up. Now it's time to get dirty. So we're going to uh, lightly mist these with black. And we're going to come back with some pure acetone and paper towel. That's it. We're going to use that to rub them down, and that's how I get the dirty look. And then the final step, once that's done, is we'll go back and we'll speckle this with uh, a little bit of black and a toothbrush. So here we go. All right, so I've just misted. Basically, I just kind of put little high and low spots in here with some black. And I've already baked these so that when I use the acetone, it doesn't uh, jack up the paint underneath. So... I'm just going to do quick strokes. I don't want to rub off all the dirty. I just want to leave enough on there to give it a little uh, worn feel, a little dirty feel. But I also don't want to look like I just sprayed paint on it. So the idea is just to give it a little wear. It gets down in the cracks and crevices and the entire look. When you're done, it will give you that feel you're looking for. So... Uh, one of the other videos I did, I kind of talked a, bit, a little bit about the stressing and I did some of this. This is just one technique. You can also use steel wool. Um, I like the way this turns out on these small projects like this. On larger projects, I typically use steel wool because it's a lot of acetone to try to rub over a huge space. Um, now, if you're using a different kind of paint, for example, if you're, if you're using, you know, like Createx or Wicked Colors and you go throw in some acetone down, you're likely to just completely erase everything you did. Uh, so caution on the product that you use, um, experiment on scrap stuff, on how you want to try to distress, get the look that you're going for. You know, you, you may find that just a little green scrub pad works really well for you. You may find that um, some paint thinner or something like that works for you. So whatever you do, just take your time and get a practice piece going and that will help you um, with your finished product. So I got to do the rest of these pieces, all of this, the uh, titanium, everything is going to get that done. Um, we're going to come back and do the speckling. I'll show you how I do that. And then we'll do a reassembly. So here we go. We're just going to do a little speckling. Um, you can see we got the distressing has been done on this, so it's ready. It's got a little speckling and I just have a little extra paint in a cup. Get it on my brush. I flick off the excess and then literally just lightly flick what I'm working on. And this just adds a little depth and a little texture. It's actually kind of hard to see in the video sometimes, so I like to be able to show it. But the finished product usually turns out pretty cool. Uh, I do this on a variety of different projects, but obviously just stuff that's been distressed. It just adds a little extra wear look to it. Not a lot, just a little character and it adds to the overall effect, in my opinion. Some people might not like it, but so far I've gotten, um, gotten a lot of positive remarks on it. People seem to like it. So I'll keep adding it. You don't add it on all the projects, but just enough, just enough. But there you go. That's the basics on adding some speckling. This is actually kind of hard to see on camera. But uh, now we're going to go ahead and do assembly. Okay, let's assemble. I have a video that I do a complete assembly. Um, so all these parts and how to put them together. And I've got another video about taking it all apart. So I'm not going to sit through 
that whole thing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up. We'll put this together and then uh, when it's all said and done, we'll see the finished product. Okay, so we're ready to go. I like to add a little lubricant. It's not really necessary to be quite honest, but I just put a little bit on the slides, a little bit here because the slide's gonna rock back on this thing. Uh, so put a little bit here. And then also on the, uh, the barrel section, so. Everywhere that it's just going to slide, just add a little lubricant, just smooths it out, gives it for a cleaner um, action. Which, you know, still it's a toy, but still want it to perform smoothly and all that. Um, so I just add a little on the barrel. Not really too terribly different than I would do with a real one. And then we'll go ahead and drop the spring in. Like that. Slide it on like that. If you've been thinking about getting one of these 1911s, again, I do highly encourage it. They are quite a bit of fun. There we go, got a nice clean rack. And drop our mag in, make sure it works. Yes, it does. We'll throw our silencer on. And there you go. You are ready to go. Now I gotta put these last two screws in. They take a little extra time, so I figured I didn't wanna waste any more of that time. But there we go. I hope my client loves it. This is the uh, the new text and the new face, which I really actually like quite a bit more. So I think this will be the one I switch it up with. So hope you love it. Again, like and subscribe. I love any comments you have, any questions you have. I try to answer every question, every comment that I can uh, as fast as I can. Thanks so much. Yeah.